All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about this Harbor Freight spray gun. And it's kind of dirty. Used it a few times. A lot of times, actually. And I sprayed this car with it. And I'm going to go through what's on here and a little bit about it. And, then we're going to, and if you stay on the video a little bit longer, you can watch me in real time spraying the whole car with a GoPro. And that'll kind of see how it goes on. Maybe you give you a good idea what the spray gun's like. I'm going to talk to you first about the features of the gun and things that I found good about it. And it's it's clean on the inside, dirty on the outside. That's usually how a lot of us do painting. Some guys, you know, have solvent machines they can put all their stuff in. Guys at home can't have that stuff. Where I live, you can't have that. Some of the good things about this gun is this. Uh, this air cap, I can just throw this thing in solvent. Right now it's dirty because I just got done painting this. I just didn't throw it in solvent. And I can those in solvent, wait about five or ten minutes, and this cleans off of this air cap really easy. All this dirt, all this paint and everything. It's a 1.3, which is nice uh, for a lot of coatings. You can use it for base coat, clear coat. Um, this has done a high solids clear on this car. We're going to go over, look at the car in a second and go over that first before you see the spray part um, uh, it has a good fan adjustment it has a very large fan the pot is pretty good um, as long as you keep it really tight uh, the thing I like about this pot is it cleans off a little bit easier if you get one of those really cheap Harbor Freight ones you wipe it with uh, uh, acetone uh, it will it will uh, you know it, it when you go to wash it off it, it'll just leave sticky residue on there and you can just never really get them clean after a couple times using it they're just pretty much ready to go in the trash the pot is at least the gun is well, a little longer than that but honestly it's not that much better um the things that are important when you look at a spray gun are if you notice this does not have a taper on taper fit let's look at what that is real quick on the other guns and then i'll uh, tell you what the difference is here You've got, this one has a seal inside there. You can see that little white seal. Okay, and that is what seals the air cap. And it has coarser threads so that as a little bit of paint gets in there and a clear coat gets stuck in there every once in a while, you won't have as that much difficulty in cleaning it and getting that out of the, out of the threads like the cheaper guns that they have at Harbor Freight. We'll look at one right now. So I think this is the Warrior Pro gun. I'm not sure. Uh, it it has a pretty good size fan, pretty big fan on it. But the issue with this gun is same thing as the really really cheap ten dollar gun is you have a tapered here, and it fits into this taper here, and that's the seal for it. This little taper here. Let me get you back closer. Right here, have this taper, and you have these really fine threads. And you know, once you use this gun a few times, you take the head off, the this the spray head off, or the air cap off a bunch of times, it just starts to wear out, and you'll find your fan to get wonky. You'll have like a heavy edge on the top or bottom of your fan, or somewhere in the middle, because of you know the wear on there and the air not going through around it correctly or if you look here you see how this one has the holes around it and we'll look at a really good gun and this is not a really good gun this is a pretty good gun it you can spray a car really nice and do a good job with it um, but it's not going to be like if you're playing a vertical flat panel like on the side of this VW bus, you want a better gun, probably. It might work, but you're going to have a bit of orange peel in it. Even on the side of this truck, you can see it's a little bit round. So it would work okay on a vehicle like this. But the flat panels like that, there's just nothing. You can see anything in that. So a little tiny bit of orange peel will look like a terrible orange. Same with this one. That was sprayed with this gun, but it was laying down flat. So this is more how the premium guns are made. They have a set of holes around here. I don't know what the Black Widow has inside of it. It may have more holes, which gives it more air. Uh, and you can probably get a wider fan out of it. I'm not sure. 
but you see you'll see the Tecna Pro Light, which is a premium gun. They're about four hundred and fifty dollars um, versus you know some of the other premium guns, which are about you know they go on up from there they're up to i think iwata or what's that one the sada 5000 i think it's over a thousand dollars this is a techna pro light the cool thing about this gun is when you buy the gun kit you can get the deal where it has the two air caps you have the te20 te10 the te20 is probably the best cap for it the air cap here and then it comes with a 1.3 and a 1.4 I think and there's another two different sizes so you kind of get all in one with one of these are pretty good probably the best value um, Devilbus is probably the best value for a premium gun because it comes with a lot for what you pay so and it's like well uh, you can find them I think on Amazon or eBay for about $450 with all that stuff uh, back when I bought it I don't know now but it comes with a gauge too or the digital gauge so let's look at the air cap behind it so do you see it's very similar design the air cap of this and you notice this one just has more holes so it gets more air volume um, and it gets a nice wider fan for that because it's putting more air volume through the air cap and therefore you get a wider fan and you know plus the way this is designed it's just a, it's a better gun Okay, this is a premium gun. This is a less expensive gun. Okay, the thing that's good about this one for the homeowner, okay, is this gun actually does not use nearly as much air as this gun. So if you have a smaller compressor, let's say you've got, thinking about a three horsepower compressor, you might be able to paint a car with this and regulate 15. You know, you get to get it regulated at about uh, uh, 30 pounds 20 28 28 pounds or something like that um, is where you want to be with this gun with this gun here to get it to 28 pounds you're going to need like 17 18 cfm so you need a five horsepower um, maybe even bigger uh, compressor to keep up with the air volume that this one's going to need so for your diy guy you got to compromise a little bit you might have to this gun is actually not a bad gun for the average guy who wants to paint his car so with that we're going to take a look at the car and we're going to go through and do a spray with it i'll show you spraying this actual car and i'm going to do narration there won't be any music with it so right now this car looks kind of dry to me it doesn't look really wet and i'll explain to you why because this is a sign industry uh single stage urethane as a base coat and what happens is when that dries it's going to shrink down a bit which they call die back okay shrinking the paint's going to shrink shrink and die back and then what happens is you end up with a duller looking finish so what has to be done when you're done with this and will this car i would tell you right now will look like a mirror when i'm done all i have to do is color sand it with 2000 grit and buff it out and it'll look like a mirror it will look really really smooth um but it'll be very easy to get it there because the gun actually did its job and laid it down with not that much orange peel so it's very smooth it just looks kind of dull so let's take a look so we we're able to spray this in a non-controlled environment now we did have some issues uh, when you're in a non-controlled environment we were spraying in a, in a at, at uh, about 50 degrees 50 55 degrees and i had medium hardener so with medium hardener i had to really not i had to put it on a little drier than i normally would maybe i'd go just a hair wetter than this and i'd get a little bit less orange peel and i could have done that with this gun with no problem so you can see the tops are very smooth but they are kind of dull and it's dull not because of uh the spray it's actually because it died back overnight and when it's drying so i'm gonna let it die back for a few more days and then it's gonna get polished and it'll look good so this I use this paint because it was free. So that's why I used it, the base coat. The clear is actually a good high solids clear and it had no trouble putting that through the gun and spraying it, breaking it up fine. So it came out pretty good. So from here, this was not intended to be a show car. This was not intended to be a custom job or anything. This was just a quick repaint. So 
we got sanded down got some body work done to it grafted some fenders in on this the fenders were fender was gone this whole fender was uh took two fenders and made one put it in there and then gave it a quick uh, run over with sandpaper fixed a few holes in the metal some rust holes and a few places in some welded up some holes in it uh, sanded it down block sanded it once and painted it we did end up with like right here uh, i had a something fell in the clear right at the end Just something i don't know what it where it came from it could have been the booth i was in i'll show you it's not a regular spray booth it's a blow-up spray booth so uh, something came from the ceiling i think it landed right there and got stuck in the clear i just picked it out of it and it actually uh gonna have to do a little spot repair there probably so no big deal that happens when you do your own car at home you're gonna have some issues and you just have to deal with them you have to maintain them you can't just push the bake button you know and and then let the you know keep it from running because once it starts running like i get a little run right here um i don't know if you can even see it i get the right angle you probably can i kind of moved it with my finger a little bit right here to try and get it a little flatter so it'll be easier to sand out that'll come right out with color sand and buff very easily so there's not much here to do as far as that goes and you can take this from a really to a really nice decent really nice paint job you know from here won't be hard to fix so and that's what you're looking for at home when you're a DIY guy, you're trying to get it to a certain point, and that's where you go. All right, with that, we're going to go ahead and move on to the spray part. I'll talk to you later in the video. All right, so like I said, um, this is a catalyzed single stage. Uh, also could be, it's designed to also have clear go on it. Single stage urethane. Um, it's typically used for signs. It's by Matthews Paint. Um, Matthews Paint is part of the PPG group and uh, I ended up with some of this stuff that was left over from the job so I just saved it around and uh, we decided to paint this uh, car with it. I've done a few cars with this stuff and it comes out pretty pretty good. Uh, it's it's about the same price I'm gonna say it's automotive, maybe a little bit cheaper. Um, I think it's about um, I think um, the hardener is is a hundred and eighty dollars a gallon so i don't know divide that up into uh quarts it's not that cheap as far as that goes it's, but i think you can get better pricing on it when you're a large sign industry you know in the sign company um, i just had to buy some harder because i didn't have any and i usually got some of that around it's like a it's a three to one so it's a three to one year thing um you know you put in three parts paint one part hardener so it's a little different than some of your other four to one materials so most of your automotive stuff is four to one or two to one if you have a really good uh, like a high solid type material so i'm actually um uh, i think my, my settings on the gun were i think i was uh i can't remember exactly but I think I was at uh, two, two and a quarter, two and a half turns out um, on base, and when I opened it up, maybe uh, on the clear, I think I opened it to three and went a little slower. So if you notice, I'm painting pretty slow um, with this. Uh, I, I painted a lot faster than this by just opening stuff up a little bit more, but I wanted to make sure I got it on nice and even this base coat is very fussy it it will model so easily you know that's one of the things you you almost always can make for the stripe in your silvers and this is just a, a silver blue that i mixed up i had some uh, what they call brushed aluminum silver and i had some blue from another job uh, that i was doing uh, in field spraying some some uh, signage at a mall and uh, I'm gonna put some extra material uh, in doing that. I set up a little spray boost and do them in the field a lot of times. And, uh, it's kind of cool. If you've seen those signs where they're made, they look like they're silver. They look like they're car paint, kind of. Well, they are. This is the material from that. So that's what I'm using as a base coat. 
And when this car gets finally buffed, it's going to look really smooth. I mean, it it buffs out beautiful. I don't know if I'll put another clip in here of one that I buffed or like that, but maybe not. It's, you can come around, uh, subscribe to the channel, check out um, this build. Um, this is going to have a, this has a playlist going. So you can look at our playlist and get to the video where we've assembled the car, uh, which we haven't done yet. Obviously, when I'm making this video, I'm just actually using the footage from when I painted it, and I'm just you know showing the real-time spray, what's kind of like spraying it in the booth, you know, in a controlled environment. It's not completely controlled, you know. You got this uh, spray booth. So a lot of you guys might think, you know, you look at this spray booth and you think, man, that's a lot, you know, better than my garage. You know, it really isn't much better. The only thing that's better about it is that you're not making a mess inside your garage and you're spraying it out somewhere where you get all your sticky stuff all over the ground in that booth instead of in your garage and you know, everything just gets, no matter you can put up all the plastic you want inside your garage and spray and you're still gonna get you know, it just goes underneath the plastic and wipes out everything. So it's kinda nice to spray it in one of these little booths. Um, the the issues I've had is, you know, like right here, it was just was really was really way too clean. I had to put uh, a lot of accelerator in the base. In the clear, I was a little bit afraid to put the accelerator in because I thought it might flash off too quickly. So I didn't put uh, accelerator in clear. I probably should have in hindsight. You know, like you watch guys like the gun man, stuff, he, he's spraying in a booth and they get uh, he's really good too. I mean, he's actually because he's painting all day long. I I paint one car, you know, two, twice a year or something maybe, or once a year, and that's it. You know, so back when I was younger, when I was painting every day, uh, you know, when I was working in this, you know, working in the spray shop, um, I was much better at spraying. I was a lot faster. And, you know, I'm old now, slower, and also, you know not as practiced as I was when I was younger. Yeah, I can still get it on there. Uh, look good. What I'm trying to do is get it to look decent and then do the rest with buffing. That's what you do at home. You're not trying to get a perfect, you know, off the gun job. You know. you're, not, you're, you're not trying to do volume where you're in a shop spraying and you're uh, getting on to this is the I think this is the second coat, and then the third one's what they call uh, uh, I thin the material down, third coat, and then I spray it on a little bit further away, a few inches further away. It's hard to tell in the video. I was looking at it and I'm going, well, it's hard to tell. I'm actually about 12 inches away from spraying the last coat, about eight right here. So it's about well, four more inches difference. Well, maybe I'm in the control coat now. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm actually about 8 to 12, or about 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches away, and I'm, I have the material a little bit thinner, and I'm spraying a little bit faster. I don't know if you can even tell. But, um, um, and I'm on that last coat, and what I'm trying to do, usually I'll do two coats like that, but it looks so even that I thought it, would, it was going to make it. I wasn't sure. I was kind of, when I was doing the roof, um, the booth has those, you see those columns in the booth? Um, they kind of re we put shadows on the paint. And then you can't really tell um, what happens is you, you can't tell if that's model in your metallic or if it's actually, you know, the, the, uh, the booth shadow so I actually cross sprayed the roof just to make sure that I didn't have too much model in there uh, you see that that's what I was doing so saving the hood I think I cross sprayed a little bit I sprayed it one direction and sprayed it lightly the other direction uh, really dusty I might not even have pulled full trigger and uh, sometimes I'll do that it's, I've been painting a long time so I know all the things like that not pull full trigger and, and I have to readjust my settings I'll pull it you know quarter quarter trigger and stuff like that so sometimes people would watch my video of me spraying and they go oh wow you just soaking it on there it's like dude I'm only like 
pull the trigger, man. I'm just dusting it really lightly, and I bring it up slow, and I've got the accelerator in it. They don't know what I'm doing. And it doesn't matter. You know, people just don't get it. Anyway, this is just a normal spray job, you know, just going along, shooting it nice and even. Like I said, I didn't really have much. Um, look, it was going to model on me. It looked like I got it on there pretty even. So, uh, again, I and I couldn't really see. You can see the lighting is not the best. These you know, spray boots, it was really foggy in the morning when I started. And, uh, and it, when I started, I actually had to dry the booth out. It was wet. Yeah, so. um, anyway. I think I'm in the clear coat now, spraying it out. Um, first coat went on a medium wet, a little bit heavier maybe, almost to a full wet coat. Because again, I'm going over the catalyzed urethane base, so it's biting into that. It's a little tiny bit sticky versus your regular base coat it is uh, really like, um, it's just, just solid, you know, you can, you know, you could sand it or whatever. Um, this stuff, uh, not really, you'd have to, you don't want to try and sand it, it'll, unless you really dry it out, but you have to leave it, you know, in each between coats, if you don't, I mean, you can't really tell, but I'm actually, uh, there's, there's a good 20, 30 minutes between each, you know, each coat, the base and the clear, you know, just have to go out, feel it, make sure your clear is just right, you kind of want it to that point you know every clear is a little bit different some of them like sticky um some of them you want a little bit a little bit stringy before you get to the second one you definitely don't want it smeary so if you uh, are painting and you go to put your second coat on and you can kind of smear it a little bit it's not ready you have to wait a little longer this one i put it on right at just a, uh, a sticky fingerprint so a little bit thicker, a little bit stickier than paint. And I don't know if I'm on my second coat or not, but I ran out right here. In fact, I did on kind of purpose. I knew I was going to run out. I, I opened up my pot real quick, checked the uh, where the material was, make sure I shut it tight, and make sure I put the lid on straight. It's one of the issues you you won't forget when you do that one. I know this is the first coat, so I ran out about right there. So. But that's another thing when you're spraying you always make sure that pot's under tight and that's the difficult part about this type of a pot you know i don't like using these i like using the disposable ones because they actually um when you, you don't have to tighten the lid it's always on tight it, it, they just they work better so disposable is really the better way to go uh, I did get a pot drip on this one when I was doing, when I was blowing it off. And I don't know if you noticed, when I was doing the front fender, the left front fender, and I had to wipe it off. And almost, you can barely see it, and I didn't quite get all of that off of there, but it's good enough. You hardly can even notice it. So I'm just going to leave it that way. But, uh, not much model in the metallic, kind of little tiny bit, a few places that were kind of modeling. Not really, but there was no stripe. That's always the thing I'm worried about. You stand back and see those stripes and the paint on it's horrible. Yeah, once this is all polished out, um, it should look like like a mirror, really smooth. And uh shouldn't be any orange peel and it should take out some of the waves that are in the body there's a little bit of wave here and there you can kind of see it um and well that's because it shrunk down and a lot of times you can get rid of that with a good polish and find out and, and you may do it i've done a couple paint jobs i mean i'm a painter in the sign industry, industry so that's why um, i'm pretty good at it it's totally different you know, you're painting signs, it is honestly completely different than cars. Because uh, you're in, you, you, one thing, you're not in a controlled environment. The other thing is, you're worried more about your overspray than you are about the finished quality. So it is, you should be. And uh, that's what I'm doing. So my 
compromise on finish a little bit. Keep, uh, make sure that you're not you know, painting people's cars or motor spray and stuff around you. Because that will get you in big trouble with that business. There's some cars, you know. If you're painting at home, honestly, you should be thinking about your overspray and thinking about, you know, where your where your overspray is going to go to. So, it's really important. I don't know. I can't really tell from the video because I'm on a little tiny screen where Matt maybe. I'm commenting the wrong thing right now because it looks to me like I'm just putting on the first coat of clear right here. Um, so the control coat uh, comment might be in a different place because I actually re-edited the video that I had. It looks more like I'm in, this looks like the control coat right here. So it's hard to say. I'm looking at a really small screen. So I can't tell what you guys are seeing. It's not a big screen. Yeah, it looks like the control code. It doesn't look like it's clear. Yeah, it's, you know, you're painting at home, painting your own car. You're not going to get the same quality finish you can. You can get a pretty nice finish. I mean, you, you do it through a different method. You know, when you go to the, when you're a painter in a body shop, when I was doing that for a living, you know, back when I was really young, you know, I, you know, the whole idea was is to not have to buff it and just to get it as smooth as you could um, without um, without buffing. So you know, it, 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 that was what you tried to do. And you could get it, and you could usually do it because you were not. First of all, you weren't usually doing a complete paint job like this. You were doing a fender and a door, a fender and a hood something like that and it's a lot easier when you're doing that because there's just so much on here and these old cars are the you know, the shapes of them and the metal and the hard edges um the way like the hood is and how the fenders kind of come out of there and the way there's just the body lines in the back with the little deep grooves in them it's a lot different than painting I think I'm in the clear now because I could just see it a little slower. Like I said, I can't really see it right there. But, um, uh, yeah, this looks like the first coat of clear. I can't really tell. But, but when you're painting, you know, when you're painting at home, you know, you're just in the newer, and the newer cars compared to the old cars, they had a lot, uh, you know, the body lines and stuff like that, would, the paint would catch on them and want to run more, where the new cars have smoother body lines and they, you know, it's a little easier. So if you watch some of the other painters on YouTube and when they're painting new cars, you know, and blue, it's, it's a little easier. It's a little easier because those lines are a little, you know, more forgiving. Or, you know, you can see the top of that fender has a corner edge and then down in the bottom there's a little groove it's kind of like painting uh, the some of the new bumpers the new bumpers are hard to paint too you watch a lot of painters and a lot of times they'll get their runs in the bumpers it's kind of like the groove we get with these old cars is where you get your runs is where there's a lot of hard edges and it's just to get the spray down in there to be even and when you're kind of getting an orange peel that's when you're going to have issues yeah, that looks like the first coat of clear to me. Yep, that is, because I don't want to stop to spray something back in there. I just wanted to get it coated with clear, because I want it to be sealed. So, you can see how much slower I'm going. My overlap is about 75% versus 50%. When you're spraying, if you're new to spraying, maybe you've never sprayed before, the top edge of your fan and the bottom edge of your fan are cover a little less than the middle of your fan. And that's why when you paint, you do a lot of overlap. So when you go one stroke across, you overlap at least 50% um, the next, next pass. 
you pass across and you go, it's 50%. I'm going 75. You can see it very clearly. 75% overlap, especially on the hood uh, where it's flat. I'll really lay it down heavy and get it really smooth on there. Or on the sides, I'll shoot just a little bit lighter because I don't want to get um, it too heavy because it will start to come down, especially in this cool temperature. You know, we're not one of the paint booth channels showing people in the spray booth, you know, and then as soon as uh, five minutes after after flash, you go outside five, ten minutes, you can push that bake button and go to 140 degrees and just stop it from running right there. No, we can't do that. Uh, in fact, it was, I was having problems with it. Like, when I got all done, there was some runs a couple places. I took tape and pulled them back off and had them all fixed up and they were gone. And I went, well, looks like it's starting to flash pretty good. And I went into the house and 30 minutes later or an hour later, the runs, some of them came back. So that's just the way it works when you're, when you're not in a controlled environment. And if I could just, if it was warmer out, if the sun was a little better, and I could push it outside and just shove it into the sun. It's an old trick from back when I was a painter. We didn't have controlled spray booths either, and uh, we didn't. We couldn't set the temperature at 70. The, the advantage of that stuff is is when you're when you have that that temperature always the same. I'm I think gunman. He sets his temperature. I think 80 degrees. Um, he, uh, he does it Celsius, I forget what it was. It was like 25 or 30, 30 degrees, 20, 28 degrees, something like that where he sets it. But it's right at about 75 or something like that. Or 80, I think 80. He liked it a little warmer. And then um, when he gets done, you know, he sets it on nice and heavy and then just walks outside, lets it, you know, lets it flow for five or 10 minutes. And a lot of the other guys I know, what's his name, uh, another one of the guys on YouTube, he hits the bake button after 10 minutes of set, and then goes up to 140 degrees, and then your, uh, yeah, my comments that I'm reading here are off, so, anyway, I'll just leave them on there that way, because that way you guys will understand. But, uh, I did run out, but it was at the last point of that fender, the back corner. I kind of ran out of purpose. I knew I needed a little bit more, but I wasn't sure exactly how much. I don't want to waste material, so I mixed up to get me where I thought it would be pretty close. And so I wouldn't have extra to throw away. And then when I got there, I ran out in that one spot I knew right where I ran out so I was like a good place I'd stop you know look at my pot see where I'm at just start feeling your gun when you're spraying you kind of feel if it's getting light you know you're running low okay where do I want to run out is, am I going to let it run out usually I won't let it run out I'll just stop and then go fill it up before it's completely out because I don't want to run out like in the middle of a door or something like that is then trying to find that spot again and then you're gonna gonna double overlap and you'll probably get a run you know that's the way to prevent some of that stuff from happening back when i was younger i'd always have it all figured out you know i knew exactly how far i'd get on a pot and i would just be ready to go change it out at this one point and uh I'd feel that gun getting light, I'd be like, oh, I get to this door. I knew exactly, you know, because when you're painting every day, it's different than when you paint two times a year. It just really is. It's not the same. So anyway, we're working away along here. I'm not sure which coat I'm in, but it looks like uh, that's on a dull surface and I'm spraying on a shiny on a shiny material so I'm pretty sure that's first coat of care so yeah first coat of care a little bit faster than the second coat I slowed down just a little bit uh, I think I also had opened up two three and a quarter turns out at some point 
I just know I just I set it somewhere uh, usually at like two and a half and then I drop spain a little bit and then I go another quarter if I need to and then I go another quarter that's kind of how I do it and you know if if I you know if I when I was younger and I could spray faster and part of the issue is is this booth is kind of narrow so I having to crouch down I you know and spraying faster I have the problem with that if I'm kind of crunched in there and I have to keep moving quickly I'll have to stop more or something and you know because I'm kind of in a little tight spot there if you notice that's pretty narrow um, then what happens is like I get to that point where you know I, I'm spraying across and I, and I bump into something and that's the worst thing to happen that's going to be a definite run you just Putting it on even is the key thing to you know, getting no orange peel, low orange peel, trying to get it on even and heavy, just right to that point where it's not gonna run, but it'll have no orange peel or very little orange peel. And there really is no such thing as no orange peel. You get some amount of it, um, no matter, you know, I don't know anybody who doesn't get anything at all. I mean, back in the old days with 60 pound guns, I could do it. But I could get it pretty good. I mean, it's a lot better than these. But if you're at home, you're not going to spray. I remember back years ago, I was spraying 60 pounds, painting cars and, and uh, you know, painting side work when I was doing that. I don't do any of that now. None of it. I do my own. Um, and. I remember back then, uh, after painting at 60 pounds, and just pulled it, I did a little bug and a paint pulled out, and it just had no orange peel, it was just like super flat, super smooth. And uh, of course, my neighbor you know, says, Hey, uh, a little over spray on my car. <laughs> and I go, Well, bring it over, I'll buff it out. And he'd already called code enforcement, and so I had to deal with those people. That wasn't very fun. So, you know, if you're doing your own car at home, your, your biggest concern should be, you know, your neighbors and not the quality of things you're trying to do. It's, it's, it's not, you know, you can you use your buffing, you use your painting that you're doing to get yourself there. You know, you, you don't try and do it off the gun. You're not trying to do that. So... I made a video on how to spray without getting any orange peel, and everybody seems to just think it was a bunch of the you know pros, the guys that spray everywhere. They're like, oh, you're an idiot. You know what I'm talking about, dude? I totally know what I'm talking about. Um, I, but I'm talking to you, normal DIY guys, not to you pros. You guys don't need someone to tell you <laughs> when you're in a booth every day and you're painting every day. You know, you kind of figure it out. You know, um, when I was painting every day in, in, in a booth, back then, you know, when I was painting every day, like I said, it was, it was just routine. You do the same thing over and over, and, you know, you didn't need to really learn much. You could watch someone else. I, you learn from other guys, you know, it's funny, I remember, but I do remember um, when I was still learning, and I was trying to get no orange peel and get it really smooth. And it's funny, you know, you, the reason I made that video is I, I remember I was talking to a, a couple of guys and I was like, hey, how do you paint and get no orange peel? So that's something a little slower. I'm going a little slower, a little heavier, just, you know, getting it flowing right into the other coat. It's right at that right point, place when I could recoat it. I think there was a couple places that were the left or that, and that's why I had some couple of runs, really small ones. So, but I remember, you know, asking a guy, "How do you get you know, orange peel?" And he goes, "Well, you just go in the booth, and you go in there, and you just spray like hell, and you come out." And I'm like, "Well, that doesn't help any." So. You know, I was trying to, I remember I just got done 
painting something at home and the paint came out pretty good and I was like you know what I'm just gonna try to explain this the best way I can to people that are maybe they're new and they you know and I got all the pro guys that have been painting are all like no that's not how you do it and or guys who painted a bunch of times and it's like dude I'm just trying to explain this to the guy who's never done it before at home and I'm not talking to booth guys. I'm not talking to you guys who are in the spray booth who are painting every day. You know what? You don't need any school. You've been painting every day. If you haven't figured it out and you're painting every day, then, you know, that's a real problem. You know, you, maybe you should be doing something else for a living. You know, I'm just, that's what I'm trying to say is, look, you know, I wasn't talking to you guys. If you're watching this and you watch me spray right now and you're going, hey, well, you know, I do this and that. You know, hey, criticism's okay. If you want to see something that's cool, but just realize that, you know, when you're doing this every day in a booth and you haven't figured it out after you painted 30, 40, 50, 60 cars, you're probably not going to figure it out. You know, that's it. You know, either you, you, you know, I told this guy, you know, when they were, we were painting ATM machines and, and uh, I do a lot of those type of things. And I'm painting the ATM surround. And they sent another guy out to because I couldn't get to it in time. And of course, the job got rejected. Customer complained, said this and that. And the guy says, and this is what the guy says to my project manager. And she says, well, you know, I think I can learn how to do this better. You know, and I said, to my project manager and he goes yeah that's what he said to me and i said let me tell you something this ain't painting school this is the real deal either you know it or you don't and he goes <laughs> he laughs and he's like i go out and i redid the atm surround and it looked perfect and the customer looks at it and he goes well that's how i want them all done and he just told him look you got to wait for my painter because if you know if if you want them like that you know then He's the only guy that I could send out that I know for sure they're going to look the way you want it. So that's the same thing, you know. You know I'm not talking crap on anybody else's channel on their YouTube. And it, I see a lot of great painters. You know, the ones I like first, I think Gunman is probably the best spray man on YouTube. I mean, no offense, no shade to you guys and to like uh, Brian Paint Society. He's a good painter. Um, but Gunman, uh, he's just, he's fast, he's good, he's got it down, you know, he's the, uh, he's the best, I mean. Right, in the UK, Tony's refinishing, he's really good too, he has a completely different spray technique, you know, everybody's got a different technique, he's slower, he uses like, instead of using gun wide open, like Gunman, he's obviously got a much more room than I have. Look where I'm at. I'm just in this tight little area trying to paint this door. And, you know, he's in there. He's got a nice open area. So he turns his gun up all the way and he just puts it on. And that, you know, that just kind of remembers, reminds me of how I was when I was younger, when I was spraying every day. I just turn that gun up, crank it up, and just go at it. And, you know, uh, you know I'm not saying anything wrong with Tony it is a great job fantastic painter he really technical he just likes to spray slower and everybody's different you know you can paint however you want to paint however you want to do it you can do it slower you just turn your turn your volume down a little bit go a little slower make sure you can stay at that perfect distance away from the surface and that perfect amount of overlap that you're just constantly right at that 75% on your clear or even what I used to do when I was younger is I would paint I would paint at uh, like 80 or 90% overlap and I would go even faster so I just go so what you what happens is you get more droplets per square inch so the whole idea is when you're spraying you're trying to get more droplets per inch so that you get a finer finish and then it flows out and then it becomes flatter, smoother. 
you get heavy droplets and that's where you get orange peel if they're bigger droplets you're going to get orange peel from that so and the finer the better the gun the less uh, the better the atomization or the droplets are finer and then you're going to get a uh, better finish also another thing is if you have your air pressure up higher so if you're in your garage at home you're not going to be able to spray at you know full pressure you you're just not going to you start spraying at full pressure you paint about one panel or you have a big fan in there and you'll have overspray over all your neighbor's cars one of the two and you're you're just not going to be able to do it at full pressure so you have to turn your material down and less material coming out of the gun and then what happens is it mixes it with more air so you get less uh you get better atomization or a finer spray so that's kind of how it works and then try and figure out how to spray it on like a machine as even as you can you move, move, move methodically you know remember the other thing to do is always remember where you stop so that's why i said you know your pot's getting light stop at the end of the door stop at the end of the fender and open up the lid and see how far down you are and you go oh i better fill this up now because i remember where i'm at well, those are key things you know, to painting where if you just keep going till you run out you know those are all things i learned when i was you know 18 19 20 and i'm 57 now so uh still you know now my issue is 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 what I do now is I forget. <laughs> you forget where you are. You're like, oh, where did I just paint? Oh shoot, I'm, oh man, I forgot where I was at. And where you have a little edge you were gonna go back to and you forget it and then you go back and repaint it twice and then guess what happened? It's heavy, you get it run. Well, that's it, color sanding and buffing it. You just straighten all that stuff out, color sand and uh, buff it out and you know that's you know you're, you get good when you're first starting out painting you get really good at you know coming out of the rough it's like golf you get really good at coming out of that rough getting out of those areas and then after a while of coming out of the rough so much you get so tired of coming out of the rough that you start getting better at the game same thing with spraying. You start getting better at spraying after you've done it more. And it's just not something you're going to learn your first time and go out and nail it and get a perfect paint job. The first shot with no orange peel. And it's all practice time. Like I said, I, I'm out of practice. It's like if you haven't played, let's say you're playing golf, if you haven't played golf in years and maybe you were a scratch player at one point or whatever you go back and start picking it up and start playing again you're not going to be a scratch player you got to get back and practice more and i'm not going to go out and spray a ton of cars and, and you know, i'm way out of practice i paint some signs it's totally like i said it's a different thing you're not looking at just finish you're looking at mostly a lot less finish looking at you know where's the overspray going how am i containing this that's your number one thing and then you know how am i going to get a decent looking finish and not have you know people's cars wiped out and all sorts of stuff like that sometimes you're going to use a roller instead of a spray gun because it's just you know, you're going to try and get it as close as you can to that spray finish but it's not going to be quite the same and the customers usually are a little less picky in fact they're a lot less picky so anyway i'm running towards the end here it looks like this looks like the end of the spray i think this is where i painted all the way down here to the bottom i usually like to paint from the bottom up but um I forgot a little spot there. I actually got a dry spot right at that, right at that stupid thing right there. A little bit of a dry spot. 
right where I just painted just now, but it's behind the bumper, so. I'm checking my pot. I know that I'm low, okay. Again, this is what I would normally stop and I would go, okay, my pot's low. I know right where I'm at, I'm halfway across that back. And I would go fill up again. When I just went for broke, I figured I'm at the last stroke of the job. And uh, let me see, I thought about stopping right there. And I thought, well, I'll just keep going until I run out because I know right where I'm at. So I gotta go straight from there up to the window. This is where I'm running out right here will be the end of the video we didn't do all the touch up and all that in this video i went through i spent another hour half an hour to an hour going around with a spray gun picking up runs or whatever talk to you in the next one all right we'll come back later and check out the car fully polished you will be impressed how much different it looks it will not look anything like the same car and like i said we weren't going for a full show finish or like that just trying to get it to be painted and protected and he's gonna do a whole bunch of assembly so we're gonna finish the uh, semi restoration to this car re resurrection more than anything and uh we'll talk to you in the next one please like share and subscribe see your comments below make sure to like the video talk to you in the next one